Hello everyone, today we're going to be walking through a demo video of the Insurance Lounge online quoting tool, which also includes the electronic scope of appointment and document locker, as well as the Medicare Supplement e-application. We'll go ahead and start with the quoting tools, and then we'll move into the e-application for Medicare Supplement, and then the electronic scope of appointment and document locker. In order to start a new quote, we'll click Run Quote underneath Medicare Supplement, or whatever product we'd like to choose first. We'll enter our zip code, choose our age, gender, tobacco status, and plan type. We can choose how to sort the results, so by price, least expensive to most expensive, or AM best rating, SP rating, or company name, meaning alphabetically. So we'll go ahead and leave that at price. We can also select our effective date. This will default to today's date, but we can always move it out to, say, November 1st, and it will show any plans have an effective date between now and November 1st. So we can actually see future rates that are in the tool. You can also choose whether or not the household discount is applied, and you can add in a client label. So maybe we're running a quote for Jean Smith. We can add in her name here and then hit get quote. By adding her name, when we do an export, it will have her name at the top of the quote. So it keeps it nice and organized for us and for our clients so they know who the quote was run for. As you can see, our results are listed here from least expensive to most expensive. You see our monthly premium, the carrier name, the parent company, AM best rating, rate type, plan, SP rating and rating class, years in market, and effective date. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can choose to adjust the view by um, contracting or expanding these quotes, applying any discounts, which would be the household discount, seeing the annual rate, including market analytics, and including select plans. For market analytics, we have three pieces of information, age increases, increase history, and market data. The age increases shows us what the person will be paying for the next four years. So we ran a quote for a 65 year old, but we can see here that a 66, 67, 68, and 69 year old and what their monthly amount would be. This is based on today's rate data. So it shows what you can expect the rate would be. It's not going to be perhaps exactly what it would be, but it shows a nice projection based on what the monthly amount is currently at this age for this carrier. The increase history shows us the past increases or decreases that this plan may have had. So if we scroll down to State Mutual, we can see the different rate changes that have taken place and then the average of those changes. And then the market data shows us both on a national and state level, the number of lives that are covered, the premium amount, loss ratio, and market data. You can scroll between years to see the different changes over time. On the left-hand side, we can also export by printing, doing a PDF, or Excel download of this entire quote list, or if we'd like to see just a few quotes at, a few, at one time, maybe not the entire list, we can select up to five at once, I'll select three here, to do the compare quote. So as I click on the premium or this blue bar, you can see that it turns green, and up at the top on the left-hand side of our screen, it populates in our compare quotes. I can also click the X to remove any plans, and then when I click compare quotes, it will show me a side-by-side -side comparison of the three plans I selected. I can then do a PDF or print of this page comparing the three, or I can go back to the full list results. Another great option um, that we have is to be able to scroll down the left-hand side, I'm going to expand my quote results, and we can add in any application health questions. So maybe somebody's had a heart attack, if I type in heart attack, select heart attack, you can see that it will actually show you the look back period on the application. So we can see for a resource life insurance company, for a heart attack, it's going to ask if they've had a heart attack in the past three years. That can vary from carrier to carrier. Um, this carrier shows two years, so it gives you an idea of what type of questions will be asked on the application. If you ever forget what these pieces of market analytics here mean the age increases, increase history, or market data, you can always scroll down to the left-hand side here under options and click about quote, and this will show you um, some definitions of each of those market analytics and what the source of that data is. So that's always a good resource to have there to take a look if you ever want to see the definitions of these three pieces of information. In addition to the compare quotes, 
where we compared the three Medicare supplement plans or the same product, so three of the same products, a Medicare supplement. We can also do universal compare and compare different product types, so maybe Medicare supplement and dental. If we want to do that, or you know, Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage, whatever um, the product may be, rather than clicking this bar to turn it green, we would click this tiny globe where it says universal compare and the bar turns purple and populates under universal compare quotes. Now if I run a quote for a different product line, I can compare um, universally this Medicare supplement plan with whatever other quote I run. So this will be saved here until I run my next quote. I'll show you an example of that now. I'll take us back to the dashboard and we'll move into the Medicare Advantage quoting tool. So in order to run a Medicare Advantage quote, we'll simply hit get quote, enter our zip code, um, our, choose our plan, so Medicare Advantage, Medicare Part D, or a special needs plan. We can choose our filter, our effective year, and then how we want to sort the results by price um, least expensive to most expensive. And if it is a $0 premium, then it will show um, them listed by max out of pocket. We also have company name, meaning alphabetically, and then we can also choose a low income subsidy level. Again, we can add in a client label if we'd like. We can hit get quote. And then again, it has our results listed here by least expensive to most expensive, or if they're the $0 premium, it will have it listed by max out of pocket. We see our carrier name, the plan, the plan ID, the star rating, drug deductible, county, drug benefit, Part B reduction, gap coverage, and plan type. Again, on the left-hand side, we can do an export by printing, doing a PDF or an Excel file. We can expand or contract these quote results. We can see the annual rate. And then we can also see market analytics, which shows us here county penetration and company enrollment. Another piece here that's very helpful is this quote option. So we have this for all of our products. We also have it for Medicare supplement. You can click view plan details or visit carrier resources. And this visit carrier resources will take us to the carrier's website. So I'll show you an example here of our um, universal compare. So again, we have this Medicare supplement plan that saved for us that I clicked from the last screen, our plan G, resource life. Now if I click this globe for Medicare Advantage, we can see it turns purple and populates under universal compare quotes. When I click universal compare quotes, I'll now see my two plans side by side. So the compare quotes is for the same product, for example, two Medicare supplement plans or two Medicare Advantage plans. Again, we can compare up to five at one time. The universal compare is for different products, so maybe a med set plan and a Medicare Advantage plan. Again, we can always do a print or a PDF of this page here. I'm going to show you an example of the PDF, and so you can see what that would look like. I just click this PDF button, it downloads for me, and now we can see a preview of what this looks like. It'll have your name, phone number, email address, it says it's my quote comparison for Jane Smith, it has my picture up at the top, and then our two plans side by side that we chose to compare. So that's what your PDF export would look like. I do not want to email it. Accidentally clicked something there, that's why that popped up. So I'll take us back to our dashboard again. And I'll go ahead and I'll show you an example of our final expense quoting tool. So again, we'll click run quote. You can see that it's very much the same no matter what product we're running a quote for. We enter the zip code, age, gender, tobacco status. Now for final expense, you have two choices. You can choose a face value or a monthly rate. So maybe you just wanna spend $30 a month. We can add that in and it will only show us plans that are under $30 a month. We can choose our product type and underwriting type, so full or guaranteed, and then how we wanna sort the results. So by price and best rating, SP rating. Again, we can add in a client label if we would like to. And then when we're ready, we've entered all of our information, we'll hit get quote. And again, we chose monthly rate $30. So we'll see that when our results come up here, it's only gonna show plans that are $30 or less. So these ones here say $24.60 for our monthly premium. If I click apply fees, you'll see that these plans are exactly $30. So when you do apply the fees, that's when it would be that price of that $30 we entered. You see the company name, face amount and annual fee, the plan, AM best rating, parent company, S&P rating, years in market, and underwriting. Again, my universal compare quotes are still here, so if I wanted to, I could add in um, a final expense life plan to compare by clicking this globe. You can export these plans as well. You can add in application health questions as we previously showed you. 
You can click Quote Options to see the plan details or visit the carrier's website, visit Carrier Resources. And you can also always hit an X here. So if we're working with, a, with Jane and she says, I do not want Baltimore Life, we can click this X and it will remove the plan. To get the plan to come back, we'll simply hit Get Quote again and it will regenerate our list and bring in any plans that we removed by clicking that X. So as you can see, my results are reloading back in. It will bring in that plan that I removed. So then Baltimore Life is back there again. Take us back to the dashboard once again. So those are our three quoting tools. We'll move into the e-application. So in order to start a new e-application, we'll say for Medicare Supplement, we would just run a Medicare Supplement quote, as I previously showed you. And then any of the plans that have the e-application associated with it will have an Apply Now button listed underneath the quote. So we'll wait for the results to load here. So as I scroll down through my different quote results, you can see that the first one we have the e-application for is Continental Life Insurance Company in Brentwood, Tennessee. So it has this Apply Now button. So in order to start a new e-app, you'd simply click Apply Now, and it would take you directly into the e-app. So I'm going to click this to show a quick example of how to get this started. Now the first time that you submit an e-app for a particular carrier in a particular state, you will need to validate your national producer number, so your NPN number or your writing number. So I'm actually going to take us back to the dashboard. This is how you'd start a new e-app, as I mentioned. But I'm going to take us to the dashboard and show you how to get to an e-application that you've either already started or already submitted. So to get to one you've already started or already submitted, click View Active under e-applications. And it's going to take us into our application dashboard for eApp. And you can see that I've already started an application for Jane Test, and she's with she's going to do a United World Life Insurance. Um, to get back in this application, I can click Edit Application, or if I want to delete this out, I just click Delete. So I'm going to click Edit Application to open this application back up. Again, it's one I've already started. I've already gone through the sections to make this a little faster for demo purposes. For applicant information, you add where you've heard about this company, the plan, um, everything underwrites in real time. So if I switch this to a plan N, you can see that the plan G price was listed here. But now when I select this plan N, it's going to update the price for me. So it's going to spin its underwriting in real time. And now when I click continue, it will actually update the rate for me. So it has all the typical questions listed here. Um, it's asking me about household, disc household discount, pardon me. Um, the Medicare information tells, you know, it's going to ask if we're covered under Part A, Part B, if our client is. Um, so we'll go ahead and click continue. Again, you can see I've filled out these sections already. Um, they have green check marks by them. Any section that would not be complete would be blank or have a yellow exclamation point telling me I need to go back and finish that section. Um, it's going to ask about our previous or existing coverage information. I filled that out here. Again, this application underwrites in real time, so it says if yes is answered to the following questions, that person's not eligible for coverage. So you notice as I switch my answer to yes, this is underwriting, it's updating the application here in real time. And you can see I get a notification up at the top that says the applicant may not be issued coverage because we answered yes to at least one question. So as I switch it back to no, that notification will go away for me. But it's really nice to know it underwrites in real time. Um, so that you're not going through the entire application and getting to the end and submitting it and realizing that the application is um, an automatic decline based on something we answered. It will underwrite in real time, saving you tons of time this AEP. It's going to ask if we've taken any um, over-the-counter drugs or prescription drugs. If we say yes, we have the option to add in these drugs. Again, if we add in a decline drug, it's going to tell us that they're not eligible for coverage. And we're already to the method of payment, so you can see move through this pretty fast. It's asking if we'll do a wet signature, we'll say no. We'll do an automatic bank account withdraw from our checking account. We added in our routing number and our, um, our, our financial institution name, so First National Bank of Omaha, that's our client's bank. Um, we put in their account number, the client's first and last name. Um, then you can also choose if it's going to be a direct bill or automatic bank account withdraw and you can choose what day it comes out. So I said I want it to come out on the first of the month. You can choose any day of the month. So a lot of different customizations there for billing when it comes to how your client is paying for this policy. 
We can choose where the policy is delivered. I said applicant. We've, we've said that we've accurately recorded the information and we certify we've interviewed the proposed applicant. We can also add in notes to underwriting, upload any documents, so supporting documents such as notice of termination or evidence of insurance, then choose the files from our computer. And then once we've entered everything, we have all the green check marks here, we're going to go ahead and verify this application. So that means we've, we're verifying that everything's been filled out. We're going to go ahead and move forward to submit the application. So we'll do one final check, make sure all of our, our sections are completed. If we're missing anything or need to change our answer, we can click Edit Section. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and lock and e-sign. So because we're doing the electronic signature, our applicant will receive an email with a link and a verification code. So once I agree to these terms and conditions, I would click Agree. And then again, our applicant is going to receive an email um, because we're going to say we're not in the same physical location and so we're getting an email signature link. Now if they were in the same physical location we would say yes um, and then we could just provide mother's maiden name and last for the social for the signature. But if we do email signature we want to make sure this is the applicant's signature. They'll be emailed a link and a verification code. All they do is click the link and enter the verification code for their signature. I'm going to say that we are in the same physical location so I don't have to retrieve that email. And then I'll open each of these different forms here. As I'm clicking them, they're opening up at the top of my window, making sure I'm reading those. And then I will say I've read, received, and kept a copy. Now this is the applicant signature. So Jane's mother's maiden name will say is Smith, the last four of her soch, one, two, three, four. And this is her signing. This is also um, how the producer can sign. So they just click this apply e-signature, and then we'll sign the application. So as you can see, we move through the application very quickly. It's a very easy, intuitive application to use. It makes it pretty foolproof when it's checking all those things in real time. So um, like the drugs, the plans, prices updated in real time. It makes it really easy. So you're never um, unsure about anything when you're going through. It's going to keep you notified of what's going on as you move through the application. So now it's actually submitting directly to the carrier. We have a last chance to download these documents before it's submitted. Um, if we go back to view applications in our dashboard, we will be able to see the policy number that's populated. So um, it's going to say submission prepared here. If, it's, um, if we do get the policy number, that would be listed here so we can go to the carrier and check that status. I'll take us back to the dashboard. Again, that's the Medicare Supplement e-application. And I'll go ahead and take us into the document locker. Um, so I'll go ahead and click view files. Now the document locker is great because you can upload any existing documents you have or store any of your electronic scope of appointment forms that we're going to create using the same tool. Um, but let's say you have a huge stack of your elect or a stack of your scope of appointment forms and you want to put them somewhere um, more safe and secure. You can scan those and then upload them here. Um, you can also create new folders to organize your different documents in your document locker. But the main um, the main goal here, the main use of this tool is to create an electronic document. So I can create um, a scope of appointment form here electronically. When I start these, you can see any of my incomplete ones that I've started. It says the status, so awaiting producer data, or if they're signed, if we're um, you know, awaiting the email signature. But to start a new one, we'll click Start Document. Then we'll go ahead and name it. So we'll say we're still working with Jane here. We'll say Jane Smith. We'll save and continue. And then I'm going to go ahead and read through these terms and conditions. I'll agree to them. And we'll say that we are in the same physical location today, just again, so I don't have to pull up that email. And I'll do applicant provides identifying information. Again, if we did do the email signature link, it's just going to send them a link in their email and a verification code. They just click the link and enter the verification code for their signature. So I'm going to say that the applicant's name is Jane Smith again. The mother's maiden name. Last for the SOCH. The city and the state. And the zip code. And apply the e-signature. So sign and continue. Now this is the agent confirmation form. So agent name, agent phone number. 
the beneficiary name, just filling in obviously this for an example, um, beneficiary address, we'll say one, two, three, test, the city is test, beneficiary state, we'll say Iowa, and zip code 51555. Okay, so we can say the initial method of contact, maybe they were just a walk-in, we'll put that here. And then the, um, the plans that are represented, we'll, we'll say, um, we'll just add in a carrier's name here. And then we can say the appointment was completed on 10-6 of 2020. And then we'll go ahead and hit continue. So not only can we store any documents here that we'd like, we can also create scope of appointment forms. So I'm going to apply my signature here as the agent, click sign. And then all we'll need to do um, is just wait for the, the client to sign their portion. So um, if it was an email signature link, we'd be waiting. But since we did the, the option that they were here in person, this is already all completed. So again, um, we pretended they were here in person, so they just filled out the mother's maiden name and last for the SOCH. But if it was an email signature link, we would just need to wait for them to click that link, enter the verification code, and then it would be completed. Now I'm clicking Save to Library. So this form we just created is right here, Jane Smith. We can go ahead and preview this. We can download this to our computer, or I can move it into 2020 AEP Docs or SOA. So to move it, I would just click here in this box, click Move, and then say where I want it to go. So if I want it to go to Scope of Appointment, I would just click that folder, click Move, and then Jane's SOA is now in this folder. If I ever need to search for it, if I can't find my SOA, I would just type in Jane's name, hit the search, and it's going to come up right here. If we ever need to export these documents, we can export the entire contents of this document locker by clicking export. But otherwise, everything's right here, and that's the electronic scope of appointment in document locker. Take us back to our dashboard here to wrap us up. If you ever need to sign out of the quoting tool, um, it's really easy to find. It's on the left hand lower side of the screen, just make sure you hit that sign out button whenever you're not using the tool, and that will make sure that each time you sign in, you're seeing any updates we have to the software, um, and it keeps it current, and make sure that you're keeping your account secure. Thank you so much for watching today's demo video. Have a great rest of your day.